Welcome back to this course on blockchain, continuing to a part of consensus mechanism. We have already seen what is proof of work and proof of stake. Today, we will be focusing on three more consensus mechanism algorithm to conclude with the learning of consensus mechanism algorithm. The three more consensus mechanism algorithms are proof of activity, proof of burn time and proof of capacity. So let us see what is proof of activity, proof of capacity and proof of burn time. But before we proceed, let us quickly revise about consensus mechanism, proof of work and proof of stake, which we have already seen. The proof of work was a energy intensive algorithm which required a huge amount of energy consumption, a huge amount of computation because nonce was to be computed by the miners. This problem was solved in proof of stake where the miners were made miners and they were allowed to join the block into the chain depending upon the time they have spent, depending upon the coinage, depending upon the stake of coins they have in that particular blockchain. Now, after seeing this proof of work and proof of stake, let us focus for today's agenda that is other three consensus mechanism algorithm. To begin with, we will be seeing proof of activity. Proof of activity is one of the consensus mechanism algorithm which is a combination of both. It combines the power of both proof of work and proof of stake. The miners and the blockchain platform starts joining a block, making a block by using the concept of proof of work and then validation is done by proof of stake. So let us understand it, it in detail. That how does proof of activity actually works? To create a block, the miner uses proof of work concept. He has to compute the nonce, he has to compute the hash and then a block is created. After creating the block, the miner announces it into the network that a block has been created and for validation of that block, the proof of stake comes into the picture. The miner gives to the network only the header and the winning miner address is passed to the network. And then using the concept of proof of stake, validators are chosen from the network itself. Those who are having more amount of stake, they become the validators and they sign on to the block. After receiving the sign on the block of the validators, then the block actually joins into the chain and it is ready to accept the transactions, then the transactions can come into the block. This is how the proof of activity works. It uses the advantages of both proof of work and proof of stake and somehow reduces the amount of energy consumption as it uses the proof of work only in creating a block and only the header and the winning mining address is passed to the network which is validated by validators depending upon the knowledge of proof of stake. They use proof of stake, the platform use proof of stake to validate the block. This is how proof of work works. Now let's see other consensus mechanism algorithm, which is the task for today. The example of proof of activity is decreed, DCR. Now let's focus on proof of burn time. Proof of burn time, as the name itself suggests, that over here, miners have to burn something. So what they have to burn and why? This we will see now. The miners have to burn their coins. Now, how do they burn their coins? They burn the coins by sending them to a verified address. The address is verified, but it is an unspendable address. They send their coins to a verifiable, unspendable address, meaning the coins sent to this address, this particular address, cannot be retrieved back because the address do not have the capacity, do not have the powers, do not have the permissions to either spend these coins or transfer these coins to someone else. Therefore, it is known as a verifiable, unspendable address. This is 
also called an eater address. This is an eater address. It will eat the coins. So miners send their coins to them and depending upon the power they have earned by burning their coins, they become the miners. They have the capacity, they have the permissions to now mine the block. By burning the coins, miners earn virtual mining rig. They have the virtual mining rig through which they can mine the blocks. Now, a question arises, then why do miners burn their coins? The reason is that the amount of coins burned is less as compared to the amount of incentive they get in burning the, in mining the block. So the amount of incentive is more as compared to the amount of coins burned. Therefore, the miners burn their coins and become miners gain virtual mining rig. There is another very important point in proof of burn time that is the burned coins keep on decaying and the miners have to burn their coins at a regular interval. It is not possible that the miner burns a huge amount of coin at a time and become miner for a long period of time. It is not possible. To become a miner, a miner has to burn his coins at a regular interval. The example of proof of burn time is slim coin. The proof of burn time has an advantage over proof of work that it does not require energy consumption. Over here, miners simply burn their coins and become the miners. It also facilitates that miners can burn the coins of some other blockchain platform. For example, in a slip coin, the miners can burn the Bitcoin. They can send Bitcoins to a verifiable, unspendable address and gain the power of virtual mining rig. After gaining the power of virtual mining rig, this virtual mining rig can be used to mine the block. Now, let us focus on our third consensus mechanism algorithm that is known as proof of capacity. Proof of capacity as the name itself suggests, it depends upon the storage capacity. It depends upon how much storage a miner has, how much storage the mining pool has. Now, how does it work? This proof of storage stores the results, the possible results of the hash value. The hash value which was required in proof of work, it before mining, pre-mining, it keeps the record of the hash values and that hash value is used to mine the block. Therefore, the miner who is having the highest amount of capacity in terms of hard disk, in terms of storage becomes the winner. It is a storage oriented consensus mechanism algorithm. It again stops and save a lot of energy consumption. There are two main steps in it. One is plotting and the second is mining. In plotting, the miners store the nonce, store the hashes in the hard disk. And in mining step, the miners use the stored value to mine the block. Burst coin, storage, these are some of the examples which uses proof of capacity. Proof of capacity, proof of burn time, proof of activity, these all algorithms are come into the picture to stop the huge amount of energy consumption which was there in proof of work. Now, all the consensus mechanism algorithm plays an important role in blockchain. Why? As told before, because it is a decentralized distributed network. In a decentralized distributed network, there is an attack which is known as 51% attack. A 51% attack is, suppose if 51% people of the network, the nodes combine together and they try to legit make legitimate a wrong transaction. Then the wrong transaction will join into the block. A wrong block would be created. To prevent that 51% attack, these consensus mechanism algorithm have come into the picture. And all these consensus mechanism algorithm, either it is proof of work or proof of a stake or proof of activity, they can stop this 51% attack to occur. How? Because only a miner who is having the highest amount of capacity becomes the miner. 
only the miner who has spent the highest amount of time of burn time is allowed to become. So there is no combination of 51% people joining together and allowing this 51% attack. So that's all for consensus mechanism algorithm.